Cash Girl 30 here, and this is my mini Q&A number 38. Now, guys, I know I haven't been doing a lot of these, but I do appreciate the fact that you guys are still sending me questions. And let's get started with my first set of questions coming from Final Limits 1. My back hurts more than a month now, almost. Um, What should I do about it? Go to the doctor. Yeah, go to the doctor. Find out what's wrong with your back, and I hope you get it fixed, man. I hope you're feeling better right now. And your other question for me is, what do you mean your Sega Genesis is breaking down? I mean that when I actually do put the cartridges in there, it just either goes black or it freezes while I'm playing it. So yeah, I mean, it's a fairly old system. It's understandable for it to stop working, but it's kind of messed up how I can't play Sonic 2 without it freezing. Or Sonic and Knuckles for that reason. And just, I can't even beat the game because it freezes just in the middle of it. And I'm like, Nyar! So... Yeah, that's what I mean about breaking down. But yeah, that's, thanks for sending me that question, man. Um, here is a question from Syntax. And your question to me is about my hashtag. Um, is it Nature Girl Q&A or Nature Girl Q&A? Now, it doesn't matter to me whether or not you use the word and, uh, or the word and, or the actual symbol. It doesn't matter to me at all. Just as long as you have the hashtag and Nature Girl Q&A, so I'll know it's actually a Q&A question for me on Twitter. Um, Sheldon Richardson is starting to use it, and thanks, Sheldon, for actually um, sending me um, questions via Twitter. And for guys, guys, if you really want to send me questions via Twitter, I am is pretty much um, at, <laughs> at RKA30, hashtag Nature Girl Q&A. That's pretty much it. Pretty simple. But thanks for sending me that question. I hope that does clear that up for you. Um, Real Harold sends me some questions. I am Real Harold, King of Nigeria. Uh, king of the jungle of Nigeria. <laughs> um, does Nature Girl think that Taryn Terrell and Velvet Sky is hot? If so, which is hotter? Um, I can't stand Velvet Sky's entrance, but I will admit that Velvet Sky is very attractive. I think that she's pretty good looking. Um, Taryn Terrell doesn't look so bad. I just think that her hair needs to be rebleached. For some reason, it just kind of looks dirty. But she really is a great wrestler. I'm really impressed with her. But I liked her more as Tiffany. Like, seriously. She's she's very pretty. But I liked her more as Tiffany. But your, your question for me is, who do I think is hotter? Um, Taryn Terrell. Because Taryn Terrell, I, I just don't like Velvet Sky's interest. And that kind of messes up the whole appeal for me. So I have to go to Taryn Terrell. Um, Taylor Swift is, is, uh, is Taylor Swift secretly a racist since she's got a since she has a southern country wench um oh oh wait <laughs> is taylor swift secretly racist since she's a, a southern country wench i'm not gonna really say that she's um racist well i am gonna say that there's probably stuff that she's going through that she unfortunately kind of airs out on her albums but i don't think she's racist at all i really don't feel that she is um, since I'm Southern, I, I guess I probably will be able to spot that a mile away. But, no, I don't think she's racist at all. Um, your next set of questions for me, Real Harold, is how would Nature Girl 30 react if, if Real Harold made his WWE debut and won the IC title on the night of Real Harold's debut from, from Axel? Um, if you were able to literally take the IC title from Axel, I would be so happy and so floored that I would, like, literally... And I was like, this is a dude that I that, that sent me questions for my Q&A awesome. You know, I, I would be crumped because Curtis Axel is doing absolutely nothing with the IC title. And the IC title is a very prestigious belt that a lot of holders have really gave a lot of honor to and a lot of class for. And ever since Cody Rhodes has brought it back, the classic belt back, like it's been used as nothing but a glorified prop and Curtis Axel is doing nothing for it. So yeah, if you can take it and bring honor to it, more power to you, man. I will be like, yay, fist bump. Like I'll be crunk. Like seriously, I really would be. Does Nature Girl like cottage cheese and co cottage cheese and chocolate milk? Um, not both at the same time, but I do like them both separately. Um, did Nature Girl 30 ever watch a TV show Under the Dome? No, I really haven't. Um, I kind of got bored with that whole Under the Dome gimmick. Hence how the Simpsons kind of did it on their movie. So I was like, done. So, no, I haven't watched it. Um, has Nature Girl 30 ever been in pain getting out of bed or coming home from work? Yeah. Practically every single day I come home. I, I come home tired and wake up sore. That's pretty much how it is. 
my job is a pretty physical job so i'm always coming home tired passing out hence why i haven't made a lot of videos and waking up completely sore so yeah that's pretty much how it is every single day but thanks for sending me those questions man my next set of questions comes from gray fox do you think taylor swift is a slut since she breaks up with boyfriends and gets and, and gets with another and writes a, a crappy song about them um no i don't think that's the case so okay so what do you say about all these guys what do you say about what do you talk about justin timberlake that made cry me a river about britney, Ste britney spears and have an actual fake britney spears on the video what do you say about that do you think that he's a slut for what he did so many years ago and and what do you say about all those other guys out there what do you say about john mayer that talks about every single chick that he dates and bashes them even on the radio on the radio either in song or talking about him is he a slut do you call him that why is it a double, why is it a double standard with women and not only that taylor swift is very classy when it comes to it well i mean she's very tasteful in other words she's very tasteful when she does these songs the only time that we even know who it is is when she tells them like if she if when she tells us who who they are that's how we know we don't really know when listening to the song unless somebody really has to investigate about it so no i don't call her a slut at all that's her inspiration that's her inspiration there'll be another day that she'll have there'll be one day that she'll have another kind of inspiration not because of her her past relationships it'll probably be something else but no she's not slept for that and i think that's a double standard and that's kind of jacked up um why do you never swear on your videos it really bothers me it's not nickelodeon you don't have to keep it g-rated honestly i am sorry that it bothers you but keeping it real i feel like if you have something to say you don't have to use profanity you don't have to be colorful about it. All you have to do is open your mouth and speak. And that's what I do. I am not doubting anybody that does decide to use profanity on their videos. But I don't. And don't get me wrong. I'm not innocent of it. For those that have heard my audios that I, that I had done with um, Dreamboy899, there are times that I actually have used profanity. And even for the live stream, there's time I actually use profanity. But I don't use it anymore. And be, the reason why I don't on my videos is because I choose not to. I choose not to and I don't feel like I have to so that's my choice I'm not trying to keep it g-rated I have no idea who's listening to me but I will say this I'm gonna say what I want to say and how I want to say it if you don't like it you don't have to listen to me but thanks for sending me those questions man seriously good question um no beef at you at all I'm just saying I'm just keeping it real um why is your volume on your Q&A so low if it's low I really don't know if it is I mean maybe i need to get internal speakers i have no idea i'm actually thinking about buying a, a microphone for my computer and that's probably may help a little bit more but if it was low before it was my bad i have no idea i had no idea at all but um i'll try to work on that but your next question for me is have you seen my have you seen miley cyrus's new video wrecking ball she looks a hammer and she's naked like a complete slut the one thing i'm going to say about miley cyrus is that miley cyrus is going through a really tough time and she probably had broken up with her fiance way before we even knew about it. And it's just something that she's going through. She's, I don't know mentally what she's going through right now, but she's going through something. Because if she's engaged and she's, you know, if she's happy, she wouldn't have to do that. I think she's just going through a lot right now and she's just trying to cover it up in another way. And that's just how it is. She's just trying to get over something. So instead of her, instead of everybody calling her a slut, just be like, look, there's something that she's going through. I'm not agreeing with that video at all, and it's a great song. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with how she did it, but I know she's probably going through something. So no, I'm not gonna call her a slut. But great question, man. And my final set of questions come from GDGD1989. Dude, let me know if I got it wrong. <laughs> I really feel like I have. Name three wrestlers in the WWE that you would like to see pushed. Um, Alex Riley, Santina Morella in a very serious way, and Wade Barrett. Um, your next set of questions for me is, what if TNA and WWE had a 12-man elimination tag match to see which wrestling show would be the greatest of all time? Who do you think would win, and which wrestlers would you like to see in this match? Um, okay, let's start with TNA. Austin Aries, Bobby Roode. Uh, James Storm, Gunner, Bully Ray, uh, ooh, uh, um, Manic, um, uh, uh, Chris Saban, um, I forgot that guy's name, um, 
bad influence, both of them. Um, I guess that's where I was. Um, Kaz and Daniels. So I think I'm at nine right now. Um, who else? Oh boy. Um, I think I said Gunner. Uh, crap. <sighs> who else is there? Um, I guess if Hulk wanted to get in, fine. Hulk, Sting, um, and Samoa Joe. So that's 12. Um, let's go into WWE. John Cena, Sheamus, Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan, oh boy, um, Kofi Kingston, um, Mark Henry, Big Show, Wade Barrett, uh, Alex Riley, The Miz, uh, who else, um, Dean Ambrose, um, Roman Reigns. So, yeah, right, those are my 12 that I actually did pick. But, yeah, good question, man. That was hard. Um, what if there was a live-action Final Fantasy movie? Which actor would you like to see play the role of Cloud? Oh, dang, man. Who has a very... Okay. The only actor that I can think of has to be Asian. I mean, I'm sorry. The, the role has to fit. I mean, it, it's like the guy has to fit the actor, but I don't want to put, like, race on it. I can't really think of any any um, Asian actors right now because I don't really know a lot of Japanese actors by name. But it has to he has to be Japanese. I'm sorry, it has to be a Japanese actor. And I, I'm not. It's not so much the fact that because of the it, because of it, it's not so much the fact that because it's actually Square Enix that dated, which happens to be a Japanese company. It's because that it had the role has to fit the guy. Seriously. But the only messed up part is that you're going to have to have a role. Because I know that that um, Final Fantasy Spirits Within did pretty good in the box office. But it didn't really look, it didn't have effeminate characters and over-the-top swords like you like they did in the regular Final Fantasy game. And I, I don't know. There has to be, and I don't know about any Japanese actors that could pull off English very well. But, um... The only person I can possibly think of, a guy, has to be either um, Orlando Bloom. Orlando Bloom is the only guy that I can think of that can fit a very fantasy-like character. That's the only guy I can think of right now. But if you guys have it, if you guys know a perfect guy that can fit the, the, the role of Cloud for those that actually have played Final Fantasy, um, uh, uh, Final Fantasy um, 7, please leave your comments in the comment section below about that. Um, out of all the Marvel, uh, out of all the Marvel superhero movies that came out, which is your favorite and which movie, uh, and which was the movie that stand out from the rest? I have to say it's all, it was two. I have to give it to two. Number one has to be Iron Man 3. Now, Iron Man 3 was pretty much the closer of Tony Stark's entire life. And not only that, you saw Tony Stark break for the first time. And you saw him become more of a human. Before, he was like an ego... He was an egotistical uh, narcissist that didn't really care about what anybody thought because of his genius. And usually, let's just say his lust would get him into trouble. But honestly, he really was a changed man by three because of what happened at the Avengers. Hence why I have the Avengers on there as well. Because the Avengers linked to, to, linked to Iron Man 3 and to what happened to Tony Stark when he went through the hole. Through the wormhole. But, um... The movie was overall was overall great because it really did show that these guys did not automatically get along at first. They had different styles of fighting, different ways of thinking. Tony Stark, of course, was a know-it-all. Then you had um, the Hulk that was so afraid of him being upset and letting this Hulk out. Then you had Thor that was, oh, the Thor! You know, it's, <laughs> it's just, it was completely different personalities coming together and they all had to have a common ground. And, of course, Captain America is all caught in the past because he was frozen for so many years. But either or, they had to have a common ground to come together. And that's the reason why I really feel that movie worked really well. That's just me. But um, your next set of questions for me is, unless that was the last one. Nope, it was not. Um, you had This is the last one. Uh, if you could hold one memory in your life forever, what would that be? Um... 
honestly, I don't really have any memories that I want to hold on to right now, but I do know this. When this happens in my future, um, the birth of my children, the birth of my kids is probably the memory that I want to hold on to the most. And the reason why I say that is because kids grow up so fast. Like my nephew, my nephew is practically like my son, even though he's not. <laughs> But seeing him from when he was born on up to now, he's eight years old now, it's like time flies so fast and you'll never know it until they grow up. So I would love just to remember the birth of my kids and actually just remember how they grow up. Like they'll go from baby to being five to being 10 to being grown. And I just want to have that memory in my brain and just hold on to it because that's something so beautiful that I would never want to let go of. But thanks guys so much for sending me these questions. If you have any other questions for me, Please send it to my YouTube inbox or to me via Twitter at RKH30, hashtag NatureGirlQ&A. It's NatureGirl30 signing off. Peace out. Later.